Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So in today's session, we'll discuss about a one more uh, concept in operating system that is a Peterson solution. And this is the solution, one of the solution for a critical section problem. So we have discussed about this critical section problem in our previous sessions that if, in, if more than one process wants to share the resources, a common resources, then uh, only one process have to enter into the critical section uh, and the other have to wait until the process being executed in the critical section. So we have seen uh, the critical section in our previous session. I will post the link so that you just uh, go through that critical section and then you can understand this Peterson solution. So this is one of the solution for a critical section problem. So without delay, we'll start it. Peterson solution and this particular solution, this particular Peterson solution will be suitable only if there are two processes. So if there are more than two processes, this solution is not possible. So very important point which is suitable for only two processes. Right. So let us write the structure of a critical section problem. So there will be entry section, entry section. So where uh, in this section itself, we have to check whether a process is already in any critical section. If any process is in critical section, if the process is in critical section, then the other process have to wait in this particular entry section itself. Then. critical section if any if there is no process in this critical section then one process can be entered into this critical section after that exit section exit section this is a small structure okay small structure so based upon this structure we we define the uh, peterson solution for two processes for two processes Okay, so before going to that, this Peterson solution will be using a two variables. Two variables. One is turn, which implies the process is already in a critical section. The process is in critical section. So for example, here two processes are PI and PJ, two process because here you just see this Peterson solution will be suitable only for two process. So let it be PY, PJ. So turn is equal to I means process I is in critical section okay similarly turn is equal to j implies process j is in critical section so this is a one variable okay so you can also use it as integer and you can represent 0 and 1 okay 0 and 1 so 0 means First process, I have one means second process. So this is a one variable. Another variable is a flag, flag of two. So which means array, which means array. So if, if it is an array, we can say flag of zero, flag of one means, okay, let it be I is zero and J is one. Flag of 0 means, see initially it is a false and it is also a false. So this is a boolean variable. This is a boolean variable. Boolean variable means only true and false. Initially both the cases we are having a false. What is this one? So flag of 0 is equal to true means 
process i so because i am indicating i as 0 and j as 1 process i was interested to enter into critical section similarly flag of 1 if the flag of 1 is true then process j was interested to enter into critical section okay so these are the few things we have to know before writing the solution for this critical section. So this is for only two processes. Let it be PI and PJ or P0 and P1. So or you can indicate anything. Okay. Now two variables will be used for this solution. One is a term. So if term is, is equal to I, that implies term variable means already in a critical section. So if term is equal to i, that implies process i is in critical section. So process j have to wait until process i completes its execution. Similarly, if term is equal to j, that implies process j is in critical section and process i have to wait until it completes its execution. And the second variable is a flag array. So with index 0 and 1, initially this will be, this, this is a Boolean data type. Initially, the, the value of this flag will be false. And if flag 0 is equal to true, process i was interested to enter into critical section. And flag 1 is equal to true, process j was interested to enter into the critical section. So these are the basic things. Now we will write the simple logic. Okay. Right. So I hope you understood so far. Let us take it. So actually this is a never ending process okay so every time some of the process will be keep on executing so simply we will write the code in a iterative infinite loop okay infinite loop so do and here let it be first flag of uh, i is equal to true flag i uh, is equal to true. Here i is 0. So don't get confused. i is equal to 0 is 1. Okay. Process i, process j, process 0 and process 1. Okay. P0 is equal to P i. P1 is equal to P j. Okay. Now let it be flag i is equal to 0. That implies flag means was interested, showing interest to enter into the critical section. So this one wants to enter into the critical section. So if the critical section is empty, automatically the process i will be entering into the critical section. But here imagine already process j is in critical section. Imagine. So for that what we have to do? Turn. Imagine, just imagine. Turn is equal to j. That implies process j is already in critical section. Now, process I wants to enter into critical section. What we have to do? So, process I have to wait until process J completes its execution. So, process I have to be in the waiting state. For that, so we will write Y, okay, flag of J is equal to is equal to true and Turn is equal to J. See, this is the simple loop we are writing. We are not writing any body. Okay. So, uh, when this loop will be get executed, I mean, uh, terminated, whenever any one of these two conditions are false. Okay. Any one of the two, these two function conditions are false. One is flag J is equal to true. Flag J is equal to true means J is interested. Turn is equal to J means J is already in critical section. So if any one of these two conditions are false, then immediately the control will come out from the loop. So nothing will be executed. So this is nothing but entry section. 
entry section. So already we have said that already process J term is equal to J. That means already process J is in critical section. So process I have to wait in this loop until this loop get terminated. That means when it is terminated immediately whenever if the flag of J is false or term is equal to J is false. If any one of the conditions is false, automatically this loop will be terminated. That's how it will enter into this critical section. Okay. Whenever the loop is terminated, it will enter into the critical section. And once it was the termination was, I mean, the complete resources was completed, then immediately the flag of I becomes false. Flag of I becomes false. False. So this is called exit section. Exit section and close. And this is a infinite loop. Why we can write test. So this is a simple logic for Peterson solution. It's a very simple logic for Peterson solution. Okay. So once again, I'm saying flag i is equal to true means flag uh, process i wants to enter into the critical section. So before process i wants to enter into the critical section, it have to check whether any any other process is available in the critical section or not. So for that, so the second second statement term is equal to j means j process j is already in critical section. So the entry in the entry section itself, the process i will be waiting until this condition becomes false. Whenever this condition becomes false, immediately the process I will enter into the critical section. And once the process or execution completes, the flag of I will be initialized to false. So this is called as an exit section. Okay, yes. Now I will write both the process and I will compare. Okay. See, uh, now let us see this is a process I. And this is a process J that implies. So here process I wants to enter into the critical section. And here process J wants to enter into the critical section. For example, this is happening. So do flag I is equal to true. So that means process I want showing interest to enter into the critical section. Immediately turn J. That means if, if suppose already process J is in critical section. Now. If the process I have to wait until the process J completes its execution. So when it will be completed immediately whenever the term not equal to J or flag J not equal to true. Flag J is equal to, is equal to false means flag J is equal to false means the flag, uh, process J doesn't wants to enter into the critical section. So that is one reason or if term not equal to J that implies process J is not in critical section. So, if any one of the, if both the things are true, okay, both the things, uh, I mean, if, if any one of the thing is false, automatically it will come out from the loop. That means process J completed its execution. Immediately the process I will be entering into the critical section. Okay, then flag I is equal to false. After completion of execution of process I, flag I is equal to false. Meanwhile, so if the process I is in this critical section. Now here, flag J wants to enter into the critical section. Okay. See, for example, now the control is here itself. This was not executed. Okay. So flag J is equal to true means if flag uh, process J wants to enter into the critical section, then automatically in the critical section I is there. Okay. In the critical section I is there. Okay. So forget about this false. This one. Okay. Now process i is in critical section so term is equal to i term is equal to i now process j have to wait until the flag of i becomes false or term not equal to i when the term not equal to i whenever the uh, the process i come out from the critical section then term will be not equal to i right so it have to wait here the process j will be waiting in this place so whenever the process completes its execution, then the flag I becomes false. So whenever flag I is not equal to true, that means false, immediately the control comes here and process J will be entering into the critical section. And similarly, after completion of that, process J will be 
initialize it to false and the rest of the things will be continued. Okay, so this is how the Peterson solution will be executed and one, once again, this solution will be suitable only if there are only two processes. And three conditions to, to be satisfied for a critical section problem. One is mutual exclusion. Let us check. Mutual exclusion means at a time only one process should be in the critical section. Obviously, if process I is in critical section, process J will be in the waiting state at the entry section. If process I, uh, process J is in critical section, process I have to be in the waiting state. So at a time only one process is there in the critical section. So this condition is satisfied. And the next one is a progress. Progress. So if any one process doesn't want to enter into the critical section, let other process have to be encouraged to enter into the critical section. So that's what we are using this flag. So if the flag of I is equal to false, that implies the process I doesn't want to enter into the critical section. So it will allow process J to enter into the critical section. Similarly, if process J, if flag of J is equal to false, then process J doesn't want to enter the, into the critical section. So it will allow process I to enter into the critical section. So this is also done. And the next one, bounded weight. bounded weight. So how much time it takes to complete its execution. So it doesn't want to be in infinity way. So it have to give a chance for all the both the processes. So here also immediately after completing the process execution in the critical section, this flag we are changing it to the false. So that implies it will allows another process to enter into the critical section. So at a particular time, it will be executed and it will be completed and it will give the chance to the other process. So this is also done. So if, if these three conditions are satisfied, then we can say it is a critical section. So the process can be in, in a critical section problem. So this is one solution, Peterson solution. Okay, Peterson solution and this will be only suitable for if the uh, it is having two processes, wants to share the common resource. Right. So, hope you understood this one and I post the critical section and everything in the um, description so that you just go through what is a critical section and what are these conditions exactly and then you can understand this Peterson solution. Right. Yes. So, I will stop here and if you are having any doubts regarding this one, feel free to post your doubts in the comment section. Definitely, I will try to clarify all your doubts and if you really enjoyed my session, like my session, share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much.